<laughs> Boo! <laughs> Blah! <laughs> Good morning. I, I, beg, I, 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 I beg your pardon. <laughs> beg your pardon. Good morning. <laughs> Still on my first cup of coffee. Mm. <laughs> well, <clears throat> why are you looking bedhead? I forgot to, you know, I always shaved my head. Forgot the choice of morning bedhead. You might be wondering why I'm talking to you in my robe, bedhead, with my first cup of coffee. Barely just got in the scriptures this morning. Uh, woke up this morning, and I got one of them stupid emails with the bullhorn from a uh, lovely uh, people here saying that they removed another video, which is something that they do. Um, the video that they removed was called A Zombie Apocalypse. And it's funny, laughable, a lot of the videos that the powers to be, the Jesuitical controlled conglomerate that has the monopoly, um, the videos that they have, now they, you know, and one, the thing about this too is, this is what they do. Okay, I, I, I vividly remember the, the dude from Maine, he, he, they moving things, his stuff left and right, left and right, and you know, whatever, and, and whatnot, and if you give them 400 bucks, you can get them all for whatever, 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 okay, whatever, that, that, whatever. But, uh, and also too, um, other channels who are cash cows for the conglomerate here. Cash cows. Okay, they will remove stuff off of their stuff, too. Um, and you, you can look if you're interested, but, you know, trying to, you know, feedback with the, with the Jesuit conglomerate that this is, um, sending feedback, um, trying to get videos reposted. It, it, it's a, it's fleeting. It, it you're it's like uh, you might as well pisseth against the wind. Okay, but um, they removed the video a zombie apocalypse, which like I said, I got somewhere. I'm not even gonna try to. I'm not even gonna mess with that. But they said, like they do. <clears throat> that it was because of medical misinformation. I'm not a doctor, by the way. But see, I know the physician, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has got my father. Okay? Um, here's the thing. The videos that they have removed, they cite that. And the context of the entire video, and, not, and they gave like a timestamp, Nine minutes in. The video was at least over an hour and a half long. And the video that they removed had no, nothing to do with the Jesuit psychological operation known as the Poison Crown or the steal of the Jesuit Punyard. Had nothing to do with it. It was just a reference in the video. And it's like, dude, <clears throat> and s several videos, they, they, they removed like a, a part two of, a, a, of as an expository video on Luke. And they quoted the same thing. It's like, man, that's not even what the video was about. That was like just the, but see, it demonstrates something. It demonstrates something. I, I'm sorry, by the way. I, I, do, I do beg your pardon. But uh, get your authorized version of the scripture. This ain't going to be day. I, gotta, I still need to have devotional time with my father this morning. But th th this is something like, hey, it's like, Lord, it's like, no. you know, I, and I don't have the thing where I can block it like that yet. So anyway, <clears throat> go to Exodus in the authorized version of scriptures. Just very, very brief here. Very brief. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. <clears throat> Verses. 1. 
on verse 3. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Destruction and righteousness. Today you go to the Lord on his terms, the elect way of the cross, and he saves you. He brings you out of Egypt, your life and past life here, a part of the world, a lost life, and he's bringing you onto the promised land unto himself. That's the instruction and righteousness angle of this, okay? <clears throat> Thou shalt have no other gods before me. <laughs> Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. I know I said under verse 3. Let's read under verse 6. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that Love me and keep my commandments. Hmm. When the, a couple of years ago, when the psychological operation known as the Poison Crown, look up Poison Crown in Latin and then you'll know what I'm talking. See, here, here, here's another thing. Here's another thing I got to mention. <clears throat> beg your pardon. I, I, again, I, I do beg your pardon. A lot of y'all, when all that stuff was going on, um, got on me in a way. It's like, well, Brad, you're not talking about it. Brad, you're not talking about it. It's like, it's that's the conglomerate's golden calf. And to this day, they are very protective of it. But see, here's the thing. And even my enemies acknowledge this. Okay? And like I said, I, I do believe it was... Um, uh, our, our good buddy <laughs> in Canada, uh, Mr. Sunken, I, I, even he, I think, it was the one who brought it up. I, when it came to that whole thing, I purposely spoke in ambiguity. I did. I did. I purposely spake that way. Okay? Steal of the Jesuit Ponyard. Come on. All right? The uh, Poison Crown. Okay? I purposely, when it came to that specifically, because when that whole psychological operation was going on, they, they were, boom, blowing people out of the water. How far are we going to get? And people were like, Brad, you're compromised. But here's the thing. Funny. When I have spake in that kind of a manner, they always seem to figure out who I'm talking about. They always seem to figure out what I was talking about. Isn't that something? Like I said, even my enemies have made this. Like, Brad, we all know who you're talking about. Why don't you just say his name? It's like, I don't have, don't have to, and I don't want to. I don't want to bring a curse upon my lips kind of thing. Okay? <laughs> it's like, guy, you know, some of the brethren, you know, some of the brethren, it's like, you know, the one dear brother, it's like, who are you? I think I know who you're talking about. It's like, hey. That's all right. The people who I am addressing when I have done that, they figured it out right away what was being said, despite the fact that, yes, I, when it came to that, I spake in ambiguities and stuff like that. Yes, I did. But funny, they still figured it out. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And the fact that it's 2024, what was it, uh, Three years ago, two years ago, something like that. No, no, it was three years ago, wasn't it? Uh, Nineteen and then twenty-one. So yeah, three. It was three years ago, right? That that the Jesuit um, psychological operation was in full swing, right? But even today, even today, okay. This thing is still. A highly protected thing 
by the conglomerate and the Jesuit order. That shows you something, that they ain't done with it yet. You know? See, they put something away for a while, and then they, they, they deceive you, they convince you that everything is happy, you're okay, I'm okay, we're all okay, and they glaze you over like a good chocolate donut with the sprinkles on it, okay? And they glaze you over, and we as mankind basically have the attention span of a gnat, okay, right? So, <clears throat> so, you are, through psychological manipulation, through predictive programming, which the whole video a zombie apocalypse was about. Predictive programming. How the media, how conglomerates are being used to pr uh, promote psychological warfare and propaganda and stuff like that. That's what it was about. But no, they cited something at the night. And like I said, I'm not even going to... Whatever, dude. What the, the, <laughs> I'm playing in their sandbox. Okay? And they and myself and the conglomerate never really got along. And I, to this day, am still being... Um, uh, not punished, but... Uh, you know... <laughs> there was a time when I, I was very hostile... Sending, you know, the, the on YouTube here they have the feedback option. That's pointless. Don't even bother with it. <laughs> if anything, it's just for means for you to va maybe vent your spleen. Okay, <laughs> but even if you do that, you gotta remember it's all monitored, and most of the things that you will encounter if you <laughs> decide to go to the the powers that be that run this uh, monopoly here. Uh, you're going to be dealing with AI anyway. <clears throat> okay, you are. All right, so it, it's like, it, it, like I said, it's kind of like you pisseth against the wind. Okay, <laughs> it's useless. But in Exodus 32 now, Exodus 32, this was not the thing I wanted to deal with. And, and like I said, it's, it, it's, I mean, with whatever. Okay, whatever. The thing is, that's not what the video was about. Okay? And you see other videos. I've seen videos where guys are talking about grotesque things. But yet, here's something like that that they zap. And it was just a little, just a little, like, fleeting thing. That wasn't even the whole context. That wasn't even the whole sandwich. That wasn't even a sesame seed on the bun. And they took it away. And it's like, whatever, dude. Whatever. Like I said, the, 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 the dude from Maine, he, they were just zap, 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 zap. <laughs> zapping things away off, off his stuff like crazy. You know, they, they, they like him. But then again, um, <clears throat> he is a cash cow to them. Okay. And the, hey, 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 the, the dude ain't monetized, okay, I'm not saying that, that they get profit because people go to see his stuff, okay, that, and he has nothing to do with that, I mean, he's, he's making whatever, whatever he does, whatever he does, he's, that's an example, okay, he's against the monetization as anybody should be, okay, uh, he's against that. Amen. But it's not his fault that because of his status and how somehow he has these people who are cultic that follow him. And I honestly believe, um, kind of unbeknownst to himself, I, I'll give him that maybe. But <clears throat> nevertheless, the point is YouTube still banks off of him whether he likes it or not, okay? I'm not insinuating or accusing. That's just a fact, all right? We're, we're in their sandbox. We're in their sandbox. <clears throat> and you two, the conglomerate, if they think whatever you've done is a, a turd in the cat box, they're, they're going to cover it, okay? That's what they do. Okay, you can, all right, but in, in Exodus 32, 
verses 1 on to verse 6. I said, I, I, I do beg your pardon. And when the people saw that Mo, uh, 32, verses 1 on to 6. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as this, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not, what not, what is become of him? And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them on to me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made a molten calf. And they said, and they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Before we continue, look at that verse. Okay? Look at the verse. Look, look very, slow it down. Look at the verse. Okay? This is a kick against you silly Trinitarians. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it, singular, with a graving tool after he had made a, singular, a molten calf. A molten calf, singular, one, okay, one. All right, you with me? You see that? Don't look at me. Don't please don't look at me. Look, look at the verse. Look at the verse. Aaron took their golden earrings. He, <laughs> because I'll, I'll later here in, in Exodus here, uh, when Moses confronts Aaron, Moses is like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, hey, the people, this, the Adamic nature. The people did this, and then I, I did this, and boop, hey, out came this golden calf. Brilliant, Aaron, brilliant. Okay, I'm talking about Aaron in Scripture. I love it, okay? But, uh, yeah, it's like, brilliant, Aaron. That was, that was brilliant, yeah. Yeah, whoopsie, look, I, it just popped out. Okay, anyway. And they, and they said, the people, one calf, a single golden molten calf, or molten calf, made out of gold. And they said, these be thy gods. Plural. More than one. Do you see that? Do you, do you see that? That... You slow down, look at the verse. So one that has at least more than one property to it, and what is it likened onto in scripture? Oh, a molten calf, a false idol, a false god. Hmm, go figure that. <laughs> one plus one. Hey, 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 Christian, you Trinitarian, remember. Uh, no matter what your mathematical equations can be. One plus one plus one. Now, I'm not even really a high school dropout, but one plus one plus one equals one. Right. <clears throat> And when, and now here, and when Aaron saw it, he, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast unto the Lord. They made their own gods, but yet it was one calf. Mm. 
And then the dude who should have been like, whoa, 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 stop, stop, okay? Wait, it should never have gotten that far. But, and they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Isn't that, isn't that, yeah, isn't that something? And where is that? Oh, yes. And now, I'll, 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 let's look at this, okay? Excuse me. In Exodus 32, Moses, you know, Lord's like, hey, these, these, these people, you know, <laughs> these people, you better get down there. <laughs> and Moses comes down, sees what the people are doing, and he's got the Ten Commandments written by God himself, okay, uh, and smashes them, okay. And then he goes to Aaron, okay, may look, check this out. And Moses said unto Aaron, verse 21, and um, <laughs> uh, let's read on to verse um, 27, okay? And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? Okay. Now you look at that verse. You might be well, wanting to say, "Well, see the people. Um, the people weren't holding a gun to Aaron's head. Oh, sure, they were trying to influence him. Okay, but at, remember, at the end of the day, too, whenever you are in conflict with something like a temptation, a sin, or whatever, okay, um, no one's putting a gun to your head." And if you want to say, well, someone was, who, who's pulling the trigger? That'd be you. Okay? That'd be you. Aaron was not being forced to make this calf, even though all the people, you know, would they have probably killed him? Probably. But then, then a whole lot of, who knows? Who knows? Okay? Who knows? But... Uh, Moses isn't giving Aaron an open door to go through to excuse or just as if I himself. Not at all. Okay, just so you know. And here's the, you know, when God confronted Adam in the garden, when they saw God, okay, <laughs> uh, they, uh, God gives Aaron, uh, Aaron, Adam, the chance to come clean. God knew what was up. God knew what was going on. But God, let, hold your place. Let's, let's go to that. Okay, that's in, of course, uh, Genesis chapter 3. Okay, go there. Go there. Let's, let's look at that. All right. All right. Genesis chapter 3. All right. Uh, verses, uh, let's see. Verses 8 on to verse 12. Okay. <laughs> and again, you, you silly, easy believists. Oh, by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. You are so... The people have been adulterated by devils like you. That's how and why you're able to get away with such stupidity as trying to say it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Because people have been adulterated from the truth. Of the truth, I should say. Okay? Okay. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk? How does a voice walk unless it has a body? Bingo! <laughs> they, they saw God with their eyes because God, you know, we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, okay? So they, they with their eyes, saw God. Okay? They saw God. All right? <clears throat> they saw God. All right? Just like you're going to see God in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? They, they physically saw God. Hence, by grace and faith, it is not applicable besides the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't, had, hadn't happened yet. Genius. Okay? So, anyway, let's go. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. 
And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. God knew what was going on. Okay, remember, our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ knows everything, Mr. Stupidhead Eric Lying Fart. Okay, okay. And he said, God, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commandest thee that thou shouldest not eat? See, God here, he, number one, he knew what was up, but God, the fair, just, righteous God, was getting Adam the opportunity to be a man and man up. Yes, Lord, I, I did. I did. He did. Would that have changed the outcome? Most likely not. But it would have been at least a better shoe. And probably there would have been some different mercies given. Who knows? Who knows? It's kind of a moot point, you know. But see, God knew what was going on. Number one. Number two. He was giving Adam the chance to be the man, fess up, and do what's right. And what does Adam do? And the man said, the woman, blame shift, oh, you see this stuff all the time, especially with these Christian lost people. The man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. The man said, the woman, her fault, whom thou gavest to me, gavest to be with me. So Adam in one fell swoop shifts blame to the woman but ultimately to God. It's your fault. If you hadn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. Oh, how many times have you run into that? Someone seeking to justify some sin of theirs or something that they're doing that they know deep down that they should. Well, if you wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have had to have been like that. This is what is referred to as the old man, the Adamic nature. Paul talks about this. You know, put therefore put away from you the old man, or put off the old man, okay? This is what this is a reference on to, okay? See, and especially with these Christians, they don't want to take responsibility and accountability. That's why when you got an idiot, free gracer coming along, just believe and receive and leaping over personal accountability, responsibility, brokenness, fear of the Lord, the requirements, okay? Uh, that's why a lot of people are ready to accept it, but it's also a lot of reason why people mock it because it doesn't make sense, okay? But Adam blamed the woman, blamed God, and that's like, yeah, fine. Fine, yeah, I did. And, and let's read verse 13, okay? Adam blew it. Adam blew it, okay? He totally blew it. Verse 13, and the Lord God said unto the woman, giving her the chance. See, God is fair. God didn't have to do that. See, a lot of y'all like to say that my God, my Father, Jesus Christ, he isn't a fair God, right? No, he's very fair. He's very fair. So you guys that ain't fair. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? <laughs> the woman said, Serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The, the devil made me do it. Okay, I'll go back to Exodus. All right, with that near, let's read 21 again. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. <laughs> For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not 
what is become of him. <laughs> here, brilliance, brilliance here. This is this is this is brilliant. Okay, you could get a better lying excuse out of a two-year-old than this one. This this one is just totally brilliant. Okay, and I and, um, and I said unto them, whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. I was like, oh, oh my, oh, whoopsie, blammo, there just happens to be uh, a calf. Just happens. <laughs> uh, and he received, verse 4, and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. So, see, what Aaron, <laughs> this is brilliant. In verse 24, it's like, boop, up, see, here comes, you no, know, see, Aaron put time and effort with a graving tool to put form, maybe detail, we don't really know, but at, the point is, he took a graving tool. In verse 24, he's saying, he's implying that I just did this, that, and whoops, here came, brilliant, brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when Moses saw the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Were they ashamed at all? No, they couldn't even blush. Hmm. Because they're made naked with these false idols, with these false gods that Satan puffs up like this. And in context to this steel of the Jesuit poniard, okay, look what a poniard is, okay? All right? Y you know, it's this thing with the conglomerate that this is, is still very much protected. It's a protected asset. It's a go-to. It's, um, it's something held in reserve. That if the Jesuit order needs to bring it up again, they keep it there and protect it. Okay? They protect it. It's a high... I mean, you can see stuff on YouTube that leads to pedophilia. Okay? Uh, the sexual overtones. I mean, you can watch um, things taken from porn videos here on YouTube. Okay? You can. But... You know, there, little G, God forbid, you make a fleeting reference to something like the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And, uh, zoop, mm, mm, mm. And you know, first cup of coffee. And you know, this, this thing, they do this to big channels too. Uh, big, big channels that got millions and millions of subscribers and billions of views and stuff. And a lot of those guys, you know, they try, um, you know, you can find videos like this if you're interested. And they, they try to, you know, talk to people and it's like, oh, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. It's whatever. You don't, you know, you're in their sandbox. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me, and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, But every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor, who isn't on the Lord's side. But yet, see, the opposite is going on when you don't fall into the ploy okay they live y'all sleep okay and what what immediately came to mind this morning uh, I'm gonna share with you in judges chapter 6 verses 23 on to verse 32 not Joshua Brad big part judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, verses 28 on to verse 32. G 
Gibeon or Gibeon. Then, excuse me, Gideon, not Gibeon. Excuse me, Gideon. Then, uh, let's read 27 on to 32. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared the, his father's house and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And what was that that he, was, he did? Um, verse 26. And built an, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this lowercase r rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt offer burnt and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down, which thou shalt cut down. Verse twenty five. We're going backwards. And it came to pass that the same night the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal, or Baal, or whatever. This one doesn't have a pronunciation key. That thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. So see, the Lord said unto Gideon, Go cut down that grove, that false idol. The Lord said that. Okay? Now, verses 28 under 32. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was, ca was cast down. Oh, their false, beg your pardon. Their false god, their little idol was cast down. And the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Woo Gideon, Lord said, cut down that grove. Cut down, cast down that image of Baal. Baal or whatever. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm telling you. Go. Go do it. Go do it. You did. You did. Hmm? See, it's the golden calf to the conglomerate. And you know, to, to the Jesuitical conglomerate monopoly that this is, they're just following orders from their superior, uh, Mr. Arturo Sosa. We're on the enemy's territory here, people. We're in their sandbox. We are. We are. And uh, if the Lord is behind what you're doing, he's going to keep you here. But then again, you know, a lot of these false prophets uh, on this stuff, uh, they're here because their little G God is keeping them there to deceive all y'all. Okay, that's how that works. Okay. Then, verse 30. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. Oh boy. Gideon dared to cast down the false eye, the false god and to cut down the grove. What did they want to do? Because he... Uh, at the behest of the father, went and did what he did. They wanted to kill him. Hmm. And that's something, huh? And I like this. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Hmm? Oh, look at what's going on nowadays, huh? Look at Christianity. Look here on the, the conglomerate, Jesuit conglomerate monopoly here. Go ahead and look at, look at it, man. Look at it. Okay? <laughs> will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death. Whilst it is yet morning, 
if he be a God, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. And also now that, that makes me think about 1 Kings chapter 18. Our boy, Elijah. Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> verse 27 in first kings 18 verses 27 on to verse 29 the prophets of baal okay leaping around and and prophesying which i believe when you read first kings chapter 18 i believe that the prophesying that these guys were doing was the modern equivalent of the pentecatholics I, I truly believe that's what they were doing um, in this context here. Okay? Verse 27 on verse 28, then we're going to be done, and I'm going to get my, my final cup of coffee and devote my time to the Father. But, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. If he's a God, let him stand up for himself. If he's a God, let him plead for himself. And said, cry aloud, for he is a lower G God. Either he's talking, or, he's or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or per adventure he sleepeth, and must be awaked. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed upon the, out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past and they prophesied, and like I said, I believe that's actually the blah, 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 what you see today. Until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any answer, nor any that regarded. Let's read verse 30. I, li I like this, the way that flows. And I, and I always, when I read this, it's like I can see this. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near to me. I I could just I, I don't know. I just I, I picture this. Elijah's over there. It's like hey, yell a little louder, man. Come on, wake him up. He's 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 God, right? Come on, yeah, come on. <laughs> I could even I don't know, but just you know, it's just me. You know, I could see Elijah going hey, Bill, you know, being you know mocking, mocking these people that worship a false god. Okay. I, I could see, you know, Elijah, hey, come on, Baal, come on, hello, come on, you people, you know. And, and then verse 30, Elijah said unto them, unto the people, I could see Elijah doing one of these. Rolls his eyes and like, come, come on, come on, guys, come, come near unto me. It's like, all right, all right, you guys have fooled around with this stupid, childish nonsense long enough. Come on, come on. I'm going to tell you about the true God. Okay, you, you've played, you played around long enough, man. Okay, you, you played around with your little believe and receive. You played around with your little God go to this church or your Calvin, uh, Calvitard. I like that saying. Okay, <laughs> all right. You, you played around with all this stuff. It, it's, it's Lindsay. A lot of you Christians are in the buildings today worshiping who? Which Jesus y'all worshiping today? You're going to a phallus house. You're going to a phallus house. A building. Where that you, that you see in the community section. About that disgusting Methodist church down the road. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what you guys are doing. They, they, that's a Catholic premise that they're working off of. Okay. 
And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Y'all in your buildings today. All in your buildings worshiping what God? You ain't worshiping the God of the scriptures. You, you certainly are not. No, you ain't. Because, you know, like that, that stupid thing on that building, you know. Where are you going? Directions inside. You got to go to a building, huh? You, you, you Christians and you people who fall for these psychological manipulation tactics that are employed by the Jesuit part, by the Jesuit order, promulgated by major um, conglomerate monopolies like this, and others out there, okay? 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, grow up, I put away childish things. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, Father. <laughs> I, was, I tried to do this yesterday in uh, the community section, but of course, YouTube, of course, was uh, acting a little squirrely on me. Uh, and it wasn't a foamy squirrel either. Don't ask. Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10. Then we'll be done. I, got, I, got, I still, still got, I got to spend time with my father. Rejoice, O uh, 9 and 10 in Ecclesiastes 11. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart. <laughs> And he who trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou. That for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. You know try to you know. You can get through to the children. Yes you can. Children. From, uh, from baby to anywhere in the mid 20s. Okay. Hey. 20-year-olds think you know everything, don't you? <laughs> you do. Most most 20-year-olds. Hey, I was the same way myself. And if you're honest, you are you are too. When you're in your early 20s coming out from, you know, 18 and whatnot, you, 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 you think you know everything. Hey, hey, look at the fledgling. Okay, there's a perfect example. Okay? Y'all think you know everything. You do. That's... There is a reason why it is so noted that the Lord himself began his ministry uh, at the age of 30. And then you go to Timothy. It's like that Timothy is an exception because he was brought up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Okay? That's why Paul said, you know, don't let no one, because Timothy was brought. I'll give you an example. That, that little boy of the man from Maine, okay? That little boy is being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord in the scriptures, okay? That boy, uh, I, the man himself, I, whatever, he's doing, he's doing what's right with his son. He is, okay? He is. He's got the scriptures, and he is bringing his son up in the scriptures. Okay? I give the only respect, it seems now, that I will give that man is the fact that he is doing right by God for his son in that he is bringing his son up in the scriptures. Okay? So my point is, by the time that boy gets to 20... Uh, that, that little boy, he, he, he's going to be grounded. He's going to be, he's going to, you know, at age 20, that kid probably going to be able to quote more scripture than some of these Christians who have been saved for 40 years. Okay? <laughs> I, I, I would have no doubt about it. Okay? There are exceptions to that. But like with Timothy, being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord in the scriptures. Okay? But... 
That's a rarity today. Beg your pardon. That's a rarity. Okay? Let's read verse 9 again. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart. What sorrow is he talking about? And put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Because you're supposed to grow up. You're supposed to put away childish things. You're supposed to grow up. You're supposed to be a little bit more mature. You look at the enemies of our Lord and how they uh, uh, speak with each other and how they act as if they're children on a playground. You can't answer the question. <laughs> you know, Eric Flying Fart went as, almost as far as to say to me, liar, liar, pants on fire. It's like, dude, and you're, an old, you're older than me probably and you're acting like a little adolescent. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. That was this was not what I was intending to do this morning, but like I said, um, I, I, I just want to bring this up. Uh, that this whole thing is still guarded, protected by the conglomerate, by the monopoly, by the corporations, by. The government, this st thing is still very protected. But see, y'all have been made to forget about it because, hey, you know, we all have the attention span of a gnat and, and the devil flashes the world in front of you in a moment of time. You, you, you flip up or scroll sideways and you see the, the, uh, the, the short videos and you ooh and on and, and somewhere down the road, who knows, the, the devil, through his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order, dredge up the dust thereof, and that toxic dust comes up again, and whoop, there it is! <laughs> so, that's going to be it for this little video. Thank you so much for putting up with the visual stimuli of me being not even awake for an hour. So, <laughs> I had a little over an hour, so thank you for watching if you do. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, if I get penalized for this, uh, you know, which is possible, videos will be starting to be uploaded on the backup channel, Least of All Fellowship, okay? So, just so you know, okay? Bye!